T.J. Hushman, who's ought to played in this league for a decade, uh, 11 years. So i got to ask you about this. Um, you played with somebody in Chad Johnson, which um, there was some baggage. Uh, <laughs> didn't love college. Incredible talent. Had some ego. Um, Josh Gordon's got a lot of talent. But you can go back to his high school days, his, his junior high days, his Baylor days, his NFL days. It doesn't work. Is I want to start with this. I think he's their best athlete and their only deep threat. And I don't think in the AFC you can slot guys to death. I think the AFC's got too many deep threats, too many dynamic players, too many players. Wide receivers have never meant more in the NFL in my life than this year because of the rule changes. So I'll start with this. I think it takes New England out of the Super Bowl spot. It's tough. Like uh, New England is like that friend that you don't have to talk to him often, but when you call him at three in the morning, he got you. That was New England. Like they've been so successful that you just always feel they're going to come through in the clutch. For some reason this year, I don't feel that. But you still have that maybe because they're New England feel to it, but the way they've played lately and you lose Josh Gordon – it's not looking good at all. How do players look at Josh Gordon as a talent? Oh, phenomenal. It's like him and Chad, are, like Chad wanted attention, but he wasn't a bad dude. Like he, Chad wasn't drinking. He was doing no smoking. None of that. None of that. It's, like it's, T.O. It's, was the same way. He yeah. T.O. didn't have anything to do with drugs, drinking. T.O. was just a little needy. Just attention. Yeah, it, it's for Josh. It's just sad for Josh. It's wasted talent. He had an opportunity afforded him. Not only you could play in the NFL, you change your life, you change your kid's life, you change your family's life, and he's been given opportunity after opportunity after opportunity, and he hasn't taken advantage of it, and it's unfortunate, man. It's just a very sad situation. You played with guys. Um, um, did you ever see a guy in your career that did turn it around, that you knew had trouble at home, maybe had trouble with an addiction or a, a personal thing, but turned their life around? Or is it usually you cross your fingers and hope, but it doesn't happen? Yes, not to this extent. When you've been given multiple opportunities as he has been given, rarely do they, rarely do they change. I mean, I know. if Hart Browse kicks you out of school at Baylor, it's bad. Because what he put up with at Baylor, and for him to kick him out of school, it's... Hey, listen, Cleveland got rid of him. And how many times did they... He was suspended two, three times. They bring him back. Oh, I got to go again. It, it's just... Belichick took a chance. He went to Vegas. He gambled in four minutes. It looked like he was on a roll, and he, they crapped out. Yeah. When you um, you start looking at the AFC now with Pittsburgh, and you got the Chargers are stacked, and you have the Chiefs, and you have the Colts, is there any team, take New England out for a second, of all these AFC teams, and they're very dynamic, um, I'll, I'll even go to the NFC, the Rams are dynamic, the Saints, the Bears defense, is there one of these teams in the NFL now, that you just don't buy. I, I've told Joy this. I don't buy the Rams. They've got star players. They have no depth. They don't have a second running back. Gurley looks tired. Goff's arm looks tired. McVay's not a big rest. Your, you know, McVay plays starters, lots of snaps. I think they got some hot dogs and freelancers on defense. The team in this league that I just don't buy this point forward is the Rams. Is there one for you? It's becoming the Rams, and I want to see the Rams succeed. It's the last three weeks, man. Golf has thrown six interceptions, one touchdown. Their offensive line is getting manhandled. That's the problem. Defensively, they're not very good, and it's odd because they have great defensive names. And their offensive line, you you watched that game against Chicago Bears and the Philadelphia Eagles? Manhandled. They manhandled that offensive line. Now, it line. is an older offensive line, and it doesn't have much depth. They got manhandled up front. That, that's where they're losing games is up front. That offensive line is not giving Goff the protection that he had early on. So now he's starting to when – when the protection is there, he's starting to see ghosts and getting rid of the ball sooner. Or he's holding on to the ball, taking sacks. The ball he just was getting sacked against Philly. Oh, just go ahead and take this and walk in for a touchdown. It's because he's under pressure so often now that he wasn't early in the season. He doesn't know how to deal with it. You know, there's been a lot of talk about Nick Saban. Uh, there was a story yesterday, Jim Harbaugh. Uh, Harbaugh's still young. He'll coach for another 15 years. There's not a doubt in my mind. There's a story today that one NFL team is going to come hard after him. I think it's going to be Green Bay. I think Cleveland will look at him. But you watch Saban on the sidelines. I'll show video. He's going crazy. 
And you watch yeah. Harbaugh on the sidelines, and he's going crazy. Harbaugh did have success in the NFL. But, do, but when you look at Harbaugh, and I just say Jim Harbaugh to you, do you think college or pro coach? Either. So to you it works either. I'm a fan of the Harbaugh's, both of them. Why? Just playing for John and seeing how he was. I played for him one year in Baltimore, and I was like, oh, man, I wish I could have played with him my whole I just really enjoyed him as a coach. Like, he takes – feedback from you whether he uses it or not he asks a lot what do you think what do you think we went wrong here what do you think we can do different like he was very open to what you thought whether or not he would use it he was open to it and I like that from a coach I had never had that happen before now Jim on television is a yeller and screamer and he is he's got a strong point of view do you know John Jim Harbaugh much I, I don't know him much I've met him but I, I don't know him He's going to garner respect just because, number one, he's had success playing and coaching in the NFL. He's going to garner the respect. It's When you come into the NFL, you're going to coach differently than you would coach in college. You're not going to yell at the grown men the same way you would young, yell at young men. It's just completely different. In college, they're trying to get to the NFL. You're going to respect them differently in the NFL because that's just you yell at the wrong person. They're going to yell back at you, and it can get confrontational. You know, it's funny because Aaron Rodgers, I made this argument this morning. Troy Aikman had a defensive coach. Big Ben, Belichick, Russell Wilson, defensive coaches. We think give the quarterback an offensive guy. I think that's right when you have a Goff, a Trubisky, a Watson, a Wentz. They're sponges. They're learning the game. Here's Young a- quarterbacks. Here's mentor. Okay, Aaron Rodgers doesn't need a mentor. A lot have been there, done that. I would argue once a quarterback gets to a certain level, Aikman was better with Jimmy Johnson, the defensive coach, that once a quarterback ages, Brady's better, Ben's better, stay out of my business, give me a coordinator I can work with, you give me a defense, keep us under 24, I'll win a bunch of games. Like if Cam and Ron Rivera don't work, I'd hire Ron Rivera. Like, I, I look at Aaron Rodgers. I'm not so sure, TJ. You've been in these meeting rooms. On the teams you were on, did you prefer a, a head coach that was in your meetings or not? Not. Okay. <laughs> okay, so yeah. Marvin Lewis was a defensive yeah, guy. Yeah, he, he, he was never in. He would come into meetings sometimes, but for the most part, it was just the coordinator running the meeting. Marvin would come in intermittently every so often. Okay, now where did you play where the coach was in the meetings? Uh, Harbaugh was in there more. He would go back and forth because he was a special teams guy, and he had that rapport with both sides, but none. Hugh, when I played in Oakland my last year. You liked Hugh. He ran the meetings. Oh, boy. He ran the meetings. He was a head coach, so he never went in the defensive meetings. He stayed in the offensive side of the meeting, and and so it was was different. I I could see – Ron, I mean, Carolina's been great on defense for years. Years. And and if you don't want to go Ron Rivera – I mean, you look. I, I look at a guy like Chris Richard. Seattle. Dallas has changed. Or, yeah, Dallas has changed since he's become a coach in that system, and they're playing more press man. Rod Marinelli, he's a cover two type of guy. So Chris Richard has brought a lot. You get a Chris Richard type of guy that will just focus on the defense, and the coordinator, the offensive coordinator, and Aaron Rodgers, they would work hand in hand. It would be. It wouldn't be his offense. It would be their offense. Because they would mesh somewhere in the middle on what Aaron likes to do and what this coordinator likes to do. That would run very smooth. By the way, the Panthers' defense under Ron Rivera since 2011, their total defense in the last seven years, third, their rush defense second, their scoring defense fourth, and their takeaways fourth. Cam Newton has And the crazy thing about that, there's probably only a couple of guys on that defense that you could name, and one of them is not even there anymore. It would be Josh Norman and Luke Keekley. That's it. And Thomas Davis. And this is why I say about Cam Newton. I don't want to hear excuses. Cam, you got one of the best defensive minds in the NFL. You can't not have back-to-back winning seasons. Like, I'm, I, I've come to the point, this is going to sound crazy. I've come to the point that Cam is Westbrook. <laughs> so they come into the league, and they're, they're jaw-dropping. You're like, I've never seen anybody like Westbrook. I've never seen anybody like Cam. But in the NBA, when Westbrook entered the league, athleticism was enough. And now the league's all about shooting. And he's not a great shooter. And now he's older and hurt. Cam came into the league. He didn't have to complete 68% of your throws. Throw the ball over the top. And then the NFL became a precision 
league, bubbles, quick, out, accurate. Cam is aged. That's not his game. That Westbrook and Cam, the league has changed, and it's moved away from their strengths. You could used to be, if you came in this league and were just a great athlete, you got 27, you're a star, we'll build around you. It's not that way anymore. Lakers are just looking for shooters. They don't even care if you can play defense. <laughs> but I, you look at the Carolina Panthers receivers. Name one receiver oh, that can. DJ Moore, that rookie can't but play. But he's a rookie. What about Christian McCaffrey? They're, he's doing well. What I, I'm not talking this year. Boy, this sounds you, like excuses. Look at Kelvin Benjamin. He played decent with Cam Newton. He looks like he can't play at all anymore. Well, time out. Uh, Funches can play. McCaffrey can play. Greg Olson will be a borderline like Hall Funches, of Famer. Who? Uh, Greg, Greg Olson will but be a he, He's been hurt the last Yeah, but two I mean, years. he hasn't been hurt the last seven. He's been hurt. The, Cam Newton is, he's never going to be a guy that just sits in a pocket and shreds you with his arm. He's gone run around, create plays with his legs, yeah, think- and, be, and beat you with his arm when he can. But it's... Part when quarterbacks get way too much credit and they take way too much of the blame, we put them on a pedestal. And prime example, golf you couldn't touch him early in the season. Offensive line's not playing well; he's playing terrible. We get we put the quarterbacks on a pedestal, and I think we need to stop doing that because if the guys in front of them and around them aren't playing well, they do not play well. When a quarterback play, Tom Brady, we got to give guys around them. It's a team game. The quarterbacks get way too much credit, way too much credit when things go great, and they take way too much of the blame when it goes bad. Cam Newton, since 2011, is 49th in the NFL in completion percentage. <laughs> 49th. He's 32nd in passer rating, 28th in passing yards a game, and the fourth most picks. And don't tell me he has, he's had a great defense. We just established that. Yes. He has had better than average O lines in running games. He has no Z star receivers, although I would argue. Could he be a part of that? Yeah, I'm not sure you'd really build with a. I like DJ Moore. I, I like him a I lot. Like but him he's too. a rookie. Man, that seems like a lot of excuses. Who do you like in the Super Bowl before you go? Oh, man. Uh, the Chargers. If I had to pick now, I would go Chargers and Saints. Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from The Herd or go watch a few segments from other shows on FS1.